It's already done. I mean, if you believe that it's already done, listen, I believe that my God is a healer. I believe we're all going to survive. I believe God is able. Oh, I believe it's already done. Somebody just lift your hands where you are and declare that you believe that you shall have whatever it is that you have. God says it's so. And so we have to walk in it with the authority that he gives us. I believe, I believe. With my hands lifted up, I believe. God, you're able, you're able. I believe God's going to do it. Yes, he will. I believe. Going to get there. I believe it's going to work out in your favor. I believe, I believe, I believe. It's got to get better. Somebody declare, I believe. Thanks, huh? He will fix it, yes, he will. I no, 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 no. That he will, he will, he will. I believe he is working it out, yes, he is. I believe, hallelujah. Gonna get better, better. I know some of you been crying that night, but God told me to come on here and tell you it's gonna get better. Don't you worry, don't you worry, don't you worry. It's gonna get better. Yes, it will. I believe God said it, and if God said it, I know it's gonna work out. In my favor, in my favor, in my favor, yes, it's working out for my good, it's working out for your good, it's working out for your good, I believe, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's working out, it's working out, it's working out. God will do it. He already did it. He will. I believe. I believe. I believe. Everything is working out for my good. Yes, sir. Lord, I thank you for turning it around, turning it around. I know you'll turn it around. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But today, uh, this is our uh, coronavirus global prayer revival and we have some strong men of God here on the line uh, we hopefully you had an opportunity to hear from uh, Pastor David Rhodes senior uh, down in New uh, Tipido Louisiana uh, help us lead into our time of worship uh, I believe thank you so much for that worship song brother uh, also we have a very special guest on the line with us and I want to introduce this brother, uh, Dr. Michael Robinson. Uh, Dr. Michael Robinson currently lives in Tipito, Louisiana, uh, with guess about 30 minutes outside of New Orleans, 20 to 30 minutes outside of New Orleans. 
Uh, Dr. Robinson is a former superintendent in Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, superintendent of schools. And uh, we talked uh, we talked on the phone yesterday, and I wanted to give him an opportunity to give you uh, a sense of what's going on down in New Orleans. Uh, when he started sharing with me what was happening, I said, Dr. Michael, would you please come on and talk to the people about the travesty that's been going on? Dr. Michael? Good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Sir. Okay. Welcome, uh, panelists. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Uh, just to share a few a few things that are happening here, we, we really want to encourage everyone to take the virus very seriously. Um, in our family, we have lost um, about seven uh, relatives, and a few were few have been infected by the virus. Um, some are recuper have recuperated, and some are re still recuperating. Um, so we really want everyone to continue to exercise the, I know that we all have different things going on in every state, which that is very unfortunate, but um, the main thing is to make sure that you wear uh, the mask and make sure that you um, are, are using the social distancing um, so that you're not uh, getting infected or that you're not infecting someone. There's a lot of unknowns in reference to what this virus is and, and how it affects and impacts people. But the things that we do know is that we can um, use the social distancing and the mask to help you know, protect ourselves uh, from, from getting it or giving it to someone. Because when you wear the mask, you're not protecting yourself, you're protecting someone else. When they're wearing the mask, they are protecting um, you. So please, um, we ask you to continue to, to really think about what you're doing when you leave home. Stay home if you don't have to leave. Um, and think about those workers when you're going into the grocery stores and out and about um, that you're protecting them. Uh, but it has been, it has been very devastating uh, here in our area. Um, people are still having socials and family gatherings. Those are things that you're just gonna have to suspend for right now until um, they give us such time that we can, you know, that we can reconvene. Um, and so uh, use social media to connect, connect and keep in touch with family uh, so that we can stay safe and save a life. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for that, brother. Uh, I wanna say thank you to uh, Dr. Michael Robinson for uh, your words. Let us know exactly what's going on in New Orleans right now. And then I want to introduce a good friend of mine, uh, Bishop Thomas Alpute in Accra, Ghana. Uh, Bishop Thomas is a uh, son of Pastor Dr. Clifton Rhodes Jr. Uh, me and uh, Bishop have been friends for quite a while now. Uh, he is a general secretary in Accra and presides over 60 plus churches. Uh, uh, Bishop, could you please give us a sense uh, what initiatives you have had to activate since we can't convene as a congregation, as a church on Sundays? Um, just, like, I, I would just put it this way. I believe God is using this crisis to also give us a message. Um, we... Um, are used to having a church with walls. I, I, yeah, I want to call it a church with walls. We are used to walking into our chapels. We are used to preaching to the people in front of us all the time. And I believe God was trying to point, at, point us to look in a different direction. And we have not been looking at that. The world out there is speaking a different language from the language we have been speaking for some time. And that's the language, you know, they, they are used to the internet and that's the language they've been speaking. And as a church for many years, most, not just our church, but most of the churches I know are structures and initiatives when it comes to having church online are really, really weak. 
And this present crisis has, has exposed some of the weaknesses in our structures. How can we have a church without walls? And that is where I am now. How we should look at the old world as our church and not just the people we see in front of us every Sunday. And what are some of the initiatives? What's, what are some of the structures we can really put in place so that we begin to see the church, not just as the people we see every Sunday, but even the community as a whole. That's the kind of church I believe God wants us to look at. For God so loved the world that he gave. Christ did not come to die for any denomination. He did not come to die for any church. He came to die for people. But our focus has just been <coughs> on these walls around us, those chapels, and we have been in there. And many times, our initiatives or the things we do for the people outside the church are, cannot be compared to what we do inside. I believe God wants us to look the other way now. We should try to speak, be speaking the language of those people out there. But we know that he will overcome. We know that the kingdom has already won the battle, has already won the war. Uh, Satan, the enemy, the dark angels, they're trying to stop what we're doing, but we're going to be diligent. We're going to fight this war. This is not going to last. God is going to come through for us. We believe it and we know it. I say thank you, Jesus, for your actions on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for the finished work. Say thank you, Jesus, for your blood that flows from all the mountain highs. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that flows to all the valley lows. Jesus, we say thank you for your blood that covers this globe. Yes, thank yes. you, Jesus, for your blood that covers this earth on yes. every continent. Yes. We thank you in advance for the victory. I say hallelujah to your name, Father God. Yes. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus, hallelujah. our Savior. And hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come in and continue to magnify our souls, continue to magnify our spirits, Spirit and continue to magnify our minds so that the words that come from us will be from you. Thank you, God, for right now. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being at the throne, looking down on us, interpreting our prayers. Thank you, Father God, for listening. Mm. Thank you, Father God, for being there for us. And I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All right. So let's go ahead and continue in. Uh, 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 Pastor Sean, I want to give you an opportunity here uh, to jump in. Um, what I want to ask you, Pastor, I uh, know that you are uh, have just founded your ministry. Uh, Pastor Sean is a very good friend of mine. I uh, was living here in Michigan, born in Detroit. Uh, raised in Detroit, lived here in Grand Rapids for quite a while, and have now moved your family to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, do you believe that this virus uh, was, uh, is allowed by the Lord, or do you believe that God sent this virus? Or What are your thoughts on this? Uh, my thoughts is I believe it was allowed. It was allowed. If you look in the Bible in Job, it said Satan came before the Lord and he was seeking after Job. And so what mm -hmm. started to happen to Job because God allowed it. He said, have you considered my, my servant Job? And so yeah. nothing has happened. It's not, God is not scratching his head like this something new that happened. He <laughs> foreknew yeah. that this was going to happen. He's all, he's all knowing. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. So I believe that it was allowed. And I, I believe truly it's to wake us up to go back to foundational. Because when you looked at Adam and Eve, it was Adam was Adam and Eve was basically the first church. And so we have got away from, you know, you know, us being at home now, you can spend time with your wife, your family, 
you got time on your hands to just build relationship. Before we was just coming and going. We barely knew each other. And so just look at now we got more time to spend and pray and you know talk to different friends we haven't talked to. So I just be, believe it was allowed to happen. And, uh, welcome, welcome, yes, welcome to our coronavirus global worldwide prayer revival. Brothers and sisters, before I bring in Bishop Thomas to give us a word of encouragement, I want you to know that God says, fear nothing. God says, not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows that prowl through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit says, do not fear coronavirus. God says, even though others succumb all around you, they drop like flies right and left. God says, no harm will even graze you. How many accept that? How many accept the word of God into your heart? He says that you'll stand untouched. He says, watch it from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpse. Yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they will catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick your lions and serpents from the path. If you hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best care. I'll only, if you only get to know and trust me, call me and I'll answer. Be at your side at bad times. I'll rescue you. Then I'll throw you a party. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about a party thrown by God? He says, I'll give you long life and give you a long life drink of salvation. Brothers and sisters, I can remember over in Genesis chapter 3, where God proclaimed that the enemy was going to bruise the heel. Mm, that's what I see. There's a bruising going on by the serpent right now. But know this, brothers and sisters, you already know, like I know, you know the end of the story. God is going to crush the head of the enemy. He's going to stomp on him. He's going to take him out. We're already good. Don't walk on this earth with fear. God is going to protect you. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Bishop Thomas, please go. come on, Bishop Thomas. Let, let me just say this in a very simple way. We should not create a picture so the enemy will see it and be rejoicing. Amen. We should not give that to the enemy. Yes, our chapels are closed, but there is a picture we can give, and the enemy will continue to rejoice as if he has won. He has no won. Mm. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman that the hour cometh when the true worshipers will no longer call on that mountain. That's right. Not in Jerusalem. But the true worshipers who worship the Father in spirit and in truth. If we cannot worship God in our homes and in our bedrooms and stay on the excuse that chapels are closed, we have given the enemy something to rejoice about. Mm. Yes, sir. Nobody can close the church. We are the church. That structure there where we meet is called a chapel. There is a difference between the chapel and the church. The chapel was closed down, but not the church. The church is still alive. The coronavirus and pandemic global prayer revival. Pastor Sean, could you lead us in prayer, please, brother? Yes. Father, we thank you for those who, who are watching, those who are listening. We pray in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We pray even now, Father, those who have lost loved ones, those who are sick, those who have not caught the virus. Father, we pray for those that, Father, you send hope. Father, we thank you for faith right now. You will take us faith to faith, to glory to glory. Increase our faith, God, to believe in this season. You will cover us. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the almighty wings.
That's Come on, right. being said, the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress. A thousand shall fall at my left side, 10,000 at my right hand, but nothing shall come nigh thee. So I speak and pray now. Nothing shall happen from this day forward. It's over now. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Pastor David Rhodes is going to give us a, a song of worship. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're so grateful for an opportunity to represent God's kingdom. Uh, we have Bishop Thomas here from Ghana, uh, Pastor Sean Griffin from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Pastor David Rhodes down in Tipito, Louisiana. And I am David Rhodes here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That is correct. Hallelujah. We just gonna praise God with just a little bit of this. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? If you want to know how I got here, it's so easy to explain. How did I make it? All these years, how did I make it this far? If you want to know how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was my God's grace. It was his grace. You see, I made it this far by the grace of God. It was his grace. Nothing but God's grace. It's the only thing that's going to bring us out, y'all. God's grace. Because of God's grace, because of his grace, it was his grace, nothing but his grace. See, I made it this far by the grace of God, grace of God. I remember the time when I strayed away, even though I knew the word, still I wouldn't obey. God's mercy and his grace brought me, brought me this far. It was his grace, nothing but his grace. Can you lift your hands and say it was his grace? Yeah, children, I made it this far by the grace. Here's my testimony. Listen, if you want to know just how I got here, if you want to know why am I still standing, it was nothing but his grace. I made it this far by the grace of God. Tell somebody I'm still here. I'm still here. And everything's going to be all right because of his grace. Yeah, I made it. Woo! By the grace. Praise 
Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I can testify, and I know we all can. God's grace has brought us thus far. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, yes. Uh, Bishop Thomas, would you please give us our closing remarks and the benediction, sir? Let us just take the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God, our Father, for the opportunity to work in this vineyard. Uh, we thank God, our Father, for his grace uh, and his mercy. Uh, I want to encourage those of you that are watching our, our uh, program, our prayer revival, uh, that we will be back online. These same three pastors will be back online if it's God's will, his providence. We'll be back online Friday, same time, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern time, 2 o'clock Central time, and then Bishop at 7 o'clock in uh, Ghana time, correct? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Okay, good. So we'll be back here on Friday, same time. Looking forward for you to tune in then. Uh, we're going to give a call to our uh, providers here and see how we can make this internet connection even stronger. Uh, and then next week, next week, brothers and sisters, we have uh, pastors from South Africa uh, and India, and then a pastor out of Chicago. Uh, Chicago, Illinois, you know, they've been having a lot of, a lot of, uh, 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 effect. It's been affected. Chicago has been affected quite a bit by this virus. And then another pastor in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, so look forward to next Monday, Wednesday.